What? Clicking drag on a bait caster. Oh, baby! Yes! What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we are unboxing and giving our first impressions on the brand new 2021 Daiwa Zillion SVTW. Let's get right into it. What on earth? This is clean. It looks like a Bantam Metanium <laughs> yeah, hybrid. Does. Yeah, it does. But it weighs like an ounce and a half less. This is cool. Oh shit, <laughs> dude! Little box. Y'all, as stated in the intro, today we are unboxing the brand new Daiwa Zillion SVTW. This is the 2021 model right here. The thing is absolutely crazy. I'm seeing this for the first time. Woo! Let me tell you what, one of the hottest reels in the market in 2021, a flagship from Daiwa, and actually our first Daiwa reel over here on the channel. I actually got this reel from my buddy John Shin. You guys are gonna have to check him out down in the description. We're gonna actually be not only covering this reel specs, talking about it and our first impressions, but also doing a little bit of fishing here on the banks to wrap things up hopefully catch a big one to end the day and catch our first ever fish on this one of the things i'm most excited about and i'll tell you right off the bat besides its beautiful looks and exceptional quality from everything i've heard is the clicking drag that makes this thing sound like a spinning reel whenever you hook up with the fish i'm very excited about that so let's go ahead and talk about the specs real quick and then we're going to get this thing in the water fish it a little bit for you guys i could not be more excited this is probably if we're being honest this might be my new favorite reel in the lineup just because it's something so new have not seen anything like this before and i think this is going to be a fan favorite from most of the crowd as well you guys let me know down in the description what other reels you might want us to see grab from daiwa as this is our first one by the way if you want to see the full review on everything spec wise broken down to a t i would highly suggest the real test video that i'm going to link down in the description he goes through this thing inside and out for all you tackle junkies i'm going to definitely give my first impressions on this fish a little bit as i say but if you want to see the most in-depth review possible i would say check that one out down below first of all the box seems kind of tiny compared to like a shimano box let me just run through all the specs on this one right here this is like the x it would be the xg if it was shimano but i forgot what they call it in daiwa terms it's xh so this is their high gear ratio this is an 8.5 to 1. This has got their hyperdrive digigear system, TWS, which is their T-wing system. So when you open the spool and you go for the cast, that sucker drops and it allows the line to come off the spool more freely. Then when you go to click it, now it's going to be putting that line back evenly on the spool as you reel. You can see that happening right there. So, new SV concept. Stuff I got to learn because this is my first Daiwa reel. And then UT drag, ultimate tournament drag system. So that's that. We're going to get into it as the video progresses. It says this thing weighs 67 ounces 190 grams the thing is feather light it's got 11 pounds of drag okay so here we go for every full turn of the handle this specific gear ratio brings in 35.7 inches so i bet you that standard gear ratio model is just a couple inches less per full turn of the handle and i bet you that slowest gear ratio is even like two to three inches less line brought in per full turn as well so that is the gear ratio you guys it's how much line you're bringing in for every full turn of the handle and it's going to vary based on your spool size so with every reel you get you're going to have to kind of check okay this one brings in 30 seven inches of line well you might have an eight five to one gear ratio reel that brings in 40 inches of line because it's got a two or three hundred size spool so you have to factor that in as well i'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up and see what else we have inside the box it comes in this little plastic packaging uh, i got the receipt from john he picked it up at a local tackle shop by the way you guys these are very hard to acquire but if you want to check these things out because it's so new Hard to acquire at the time of making this video i'm going to leave a couple links in the description of places you can buy this thing and the different gear ratios for the best price i can find as well as any other gear we talk about and use today but specifically this reel so this guy uh went for 349.99 at this store here uh, a couple bucks in tax it came out to about 375 bucks Oh man, this is so much to go through. Do I really want to read all this to you guys? I might skip half this stuff and then we'll just, you know, I'll give you my, my take. This is just too much for me. I'm gonna leave the instruction manual to y'all when you pick it up. I bet you you can even view it online as well. And then you've got a parts list. If you were to have some issues with this reel in the future, need to get it serviced, you know exactly uh, what parts you might need to get to replace it with. In this box, I didn't. there's no like soft case with the reel as in like, I think maybe one or two other Shimano's that I've ordered have had a soft case that comes with it, but most don't and I know with some other shimanos you'll also get some oil just to kind of uh, lubricate the reel from time to time i don't see any of that in here but that's not a make or break you guys are in it for the reel and not everything that comes with it i suppose so it's so i mean this is next level smooth the thing is like almost 400 dollars, right so it should be but it is feeling insanely smooth the tension knob is pretty sick it's like i gotta tell you it's kind of an awkward kind of an awkward positioning here on this tension knob tension knob seems a little tough to get to for me 
so much different than a Shimano design, which is really almost all we've ever thrown on this channel. As soon as we went from starting things off and got into our first Shimano, by the way, these are very expensive and I wouldn't recommend our new to fishing viewers purchasing something like this. This is definitely when you want to break into the next level. This is definitely when you want to go top tier, get you a new flagship reel in your lineup. Maybe you're fishing tournaments and you want to have the best gear. That's when you grab something like this. I don't recommend it again for y'all just getting started. I think you should get started with the cheapest stuff out there and really appreciate what goes into these higher quality reels down the line. So if you're in the market for one, we've got that information down below. Otherwise, we're just going to cover a couple more specs here and we're going to get this thing on a rod, get it spooled up. We'll talk about line here for just a second. We're going to try and catch us a fish. The braking system's a bit different on this guy. It sounds like you don't ever have to open up the side plate. Oh, it's clicking too and it goes from 0 to 20 on the brakes. So if you're used to like a 1 through 6, then there's just a few more steps here, right? So you can incrementalize it and get real specific with your braking system. The design looks very similar to the newer model Metaniums and Bantams from Shimano. Uh, a lot of styling cues that are very similar, but I'll let y'all be the judge down in the comments section as far as what this reel may look like. The, the handle feels a little bit shorter than the Shimano's I've got, but I don't think it is. I would imagine it's the same diameter there. Let's not delay. I want to go ahead and get this thing on a rod, get some line on here, and really talk about the first impressions versus just the unboxing and showcasing it for you guys. So I have a brand new Guggen Squad go-to rod, never used before that I'm going to rig this up on. This is a seven foot, medium heavy, fast action rod, the perfect all purpose rod for just about everything in your tackle box. If you only had one rod to carry with you for an all day session of pond hopping or to take out on the kayak, uh, or maybe just toss one on the boat, seven foot, medium heavy, fast action, that's gonna cover just about everything in your tackle box. Jigs, Texas rigs, moving baits, treble hooks, this thing is just an all around beast. In fact, the thing that's probably hardest to have luck with is getting this plastic off here from the start. I'm just gonna even leave that for a moment. When we line this thing up, it's easiest for me to do it on a rod, right? You probably see people spooling things up. Hoo hoo hoo, that looks deadly. Absolutely deadly, man. All right, let's go ahead and get some line on this. All right, let's go ahead and spool this thing up with some line. I brought out a few different options to showcase. We've got monofilament, cheapest option for you guys out there. We have fluorocarbon, general all-purpose line. I would say my favorite go-to is 15-pound fluorocarbon. 15-pound fluorocarbon is going to give you a perfect balance of castability and strength. Everything you might need for most applications is going to be 15-pound fluorocarbon. This is what we're going to be putting on this reel today. And then we also have braid for you guys getting in the thick stuff, maybe throwing some top water. Fluorocarbon is going to sink and will help with a lot of those bottom baits. And then the monofilament floats as well. All right, so I'm going through this T-wing system. This is my first time ever doing this right here. There we go, just a simple little knot to the spool. These line cutters are a dream come true. Check them out down there if you need them. Let's start cranking this thing in. I got my spool on the ground here. Tighten up the drag, right? Whenever you are spooling up, otherwise it's just gonna make no progress. <laughs> tie on a Texas rig and make the first cast, man. We're going blue baby bandito bug on a four-rock Guggen squad hammer hook with a quarter ounce blue tungsten weight. Let's roll. Check this thing out. Is that not a thing of beauty? Holy smokes. I hope we can keep it looking clean for a while because you know how gear gets after you use it a little bit. By the way, this is my buddy John. He uh, hooked it up with this reel. Thanks, bro. You got the full Daiwa lineup over here. Come over here if he's only watching that. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it senses me already, it knows. I almost nested it on the first cast. <laughs> the first impressions is supposed to be me showing you how to cast this thing and I have the brake set on absolute minimum. So I almost nested it just trying to go after a little bed fish right here. Uh, let's make the first official cast out in some deep water. Yeah, dude, I have to that like 16. I was gonna say, I mean, I don't know where the sweet spot is. I was gonna ask you, so you like uh, six, I should probably start close to 20, honestly. Yeah, that's what I did. Like, yeah. I had it at like three. Yeah. And then I- <laughs> You quickly learned. Dude, I almost wasted a whole spool. A whole spool. Oh, God, expensive. All right, man, we're going for the first cast on this bad boy. I will tell you right now, if you're looking at this reel and you've searched this video, I'm sure you've tuned in some bait casters and you know what you're doing, but I'm just gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna start off by cranking this thing all the way up to 20. I'm gonna cast it out, see if I can get that max distance. And then if I don't feel like I'm getting it, I'm just gonna crank it back a little bit. It's gonna vary by what bait you're throwing. And when I say that, I mean what weight uh, bait you're throwing really. Some, some are more aerodynamic too. You throw on like a lipless crankbait and you'd be shocked. You just launch that thing, it'll cast a football 
football field. But regardless, I'm gonna start at 20 and I'm gonna work my way backwards trying to max out the distance for the weight of this lure right here. And then when it comes to the tension knob, I like to just tighten that until my bait drops slowly. A lot of people like to tell you you just tighten it until there's no play in the spool. But for me, I like to let that bait drop nice and slow depending on what I'm throwing. If it's a crankbait, sometimes I loosen it up and back off a little bit because I know I'm gonna be catching stuff on those treble hooks if I'm fishing around some grass. So I like to just have a quick drop like this right here. I open up the spool, it drops fast. So for something like this Texas rig, I don't need that. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up a little bit. I gotta tell you, it's kind of an awkward, kind of an awkward positioning here on this tension knob. How in the world, there we go. Tension knob seems a little tough to get to for me, but I could care less, this thing looks so clean. So it's dropping a little bit slower, but I wanna get it just to showcase exactly what I'm talking about. So there we go, now it's dropping nice and slow. I open up that spool, no thumb on it, and it's dropping much slower. You can get it to a point where you tighten it up and it's not gonna drop at all. So let me crank it, I'm gonna open the spool, barely even drops. I mean, I could, I could probably cast this thing out right now. I've got the brakes cranked, so it's not gonna go that far, but I could probably cast this out and not even thumb it when it hits the water. Doesn't even think about a bird's nest just because the spool tension is so tight. What happens is the brakes affect the, the casting on the initial takeoff and then on that descent and when the bait hits the water specifically is when that tension knob is going to really kick in. So like once the bait actually stops how tight the, the tension knob in is going to dictate whether more line comes off that spool or not. So I'm going to loosen that up just a little bit get it back to where the bait drops slowly. I'll leave the brakes on 20 just for a minute just because I want to get used to this reel and let's uh let's fling this thing man let's get it to really go out there on this seven foot rod. If you got like a seven foot six, you're gonna get more distance for sure. Yeah, I could tell there was some restriction there. Those brakes are really working against me on the cast and it's not very windy either. So I can definitely come off the brakes a little bit. I think I'm gonna take it straight down to 15 or 16 there and uh, check out the casting distance. Let me bring this bandito. Oh, there's that drag. Look, the drag's not very tight. You can tell because I was just in some grass. Wow. What? What? Clicking drag on a bait caster. This is insane. Absolutely insane, man. How crazy is that? Clicking drag on a bait caster. Now, if I was actually to hook up with something decent size, it is just gonna take me for a ride. So I'm gonna tighten up this drag as well. I'm gonna get that thing, not locked, but I want there to be some serious resistance so I can barely pull that line off of there. That should be, that should be all right. So that time I used my thumb a little bit more on the cast because I lowered those brakes. Uh, this thing's feeling like a dream. Let's try and catch a fish now, y'all. Oh, I swear to God, look back there. No. Eight pounder, I guarantee you. Oh my lord, that's a maybe big more. Maybe that's more. That's big. That's bigger. Maybe bigger than eight. Oh my. What else we got on the menu? <laughs> wow, that was a giant. Well, I'll tell you what. We're gonna test this 11 pound drag. <laughs> she suspended up a little bit though, so I'm gonna skip the T rig and I'm gonna go with something bluegill profile that I know she's probably trying to fend off. I'm gonna be worried about bending these hooks out. Well, I guess if I. I need content, so this could do it. I know she's gonna take me right in there, though. Oh, she sees it. Oh, she turned on it. She's no on way. It. She's on no. She's on it. She's on it. No. Oh, she turned back. No way. Oh, she, was she, was she was on it. She was on it. No way. No way, y'all. Okay, we got her. I'm gonna throw. I'm gonna throw a jerk bait. Be able to just let it sit in her face. You know what I mean? And if it gets one erratic movement in the right direction, I think that's gonna be the dinner bell. I'm gonna burn through this hundred spool of line pretty quick, trying to figure out what she wants. Oh wow. She's here? Yes. She? No way. That was it right there, bro. I can't see shit. I just tried to cast a little further. They like that bluegill. Or maybe it was just the right spot. There he goes. Yeah. There he goes. You got it. He got it. Oh, he does, doesn't he? He does. He does. <laughs> All right. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe, maybe this will get her. Maybe this will get her fired up. Oh, no way. No way. First bass on the new reel, y'all. Jerk bait coming in hot. Coming in hot on the jerk bait. No way. Oh, off the cliffs. Should we flip it? Should we? Oh, click and drag. I got to tighten it up. Holy. Baby, yes! <laughs> Quick release, oh my god! And just as quickly as it came, it left, y'all. Wow, the zillion, would you believe it, dudes? It can hold up to the three pounders, no problemo. Female yeah, 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 to be okay. that big as the male, mm-hmm. The female is bigger. That's not the one we were targeting, but there was a couple past it. Anyways, that was the first fish landed on the new reel. Let's try and get another. Let me throw the old band eater in there. A little confidence.
Oh man, I got a turtle. I'm gonna help him out though, cause he's got another hook in his paw that somebody didn't get out. I didn't even hook him. My hook is wrapped around the wacky rig hook. There we go, look at that you guys. Oh, we can't be having all that. Calm it down, calm it down. Here, there you go bud. That's how you break in a zillion. <sighs> but I was catch turtles, man. I didn't know what I was missing. It's not even a wacky rig hook, it's like a crappie hook. And my line just got caught. I don't even know how that thing got hooked. My hook was not in the turtle at all. Miraculous recovery. Secret agent man. Dude, this thing's tiny, easy to palm. I like the grips on the handles too. Yep. Nice. As far as the T-wing goes, I see the advantage, yeah. but I also feel like there's a tad bit of marketing gimmetry going. I've always thought that, you know what I mean? Like I see it makes total sense. You should be able to get a further cast, but at the same time, the system to me, it looks fragile. Like you've never broken one, right? Yeah, I figured as much. I guess, I guess the regular system and any other reel is about the same. It's just a smaller hole there, but I've always wondered about the old T-wing thing. You know what's funny is I started off with like $40 combos I'd find for cheap, and that was even like expensive. But the first Shimano I ever bought was like close to $300. It was that Scorpion DC, because it was like the cheapest DC reel on the market. I'd figured out what those were, and like I wanted a DC. And now our first ever Daiwa is nearing the $400 price point. <laughs> it's like, but I did just buy like a $60 Daiwa the other day, but it's not here yet. Oh. I was, I'm gonna do like a budget video. Oh, right. uh, like find, you know, a cheaper bait caster, good quality. Well, I assume it's good quality. I think it's like a something. Oh, I don't know. Caster? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard good things about them as like an entry level um, yep. budget. Yep, that's yeah. what I'm trying to go for is just do a little review and slick little reel right here. I can promise you we are gonna ding this thing up. It, it sucks and it's unfortunate, but Unless you just keep these things on the deck of your boat, if you're like pond hopping and you are, you know, you got to set your gear down, it's uh, it's too easy to mess things up. It's already got, look, it's got a little, the tiniest of a scuff mark, I think, from when I set it down after catching that turtle. This is why you can't have nice things, y'all. Just buy you some $20 bait casters. Just break them all. Oh. Coming in hot. Oh, <laughs> There we go. That's a cast right there. I bumped it down to uh, 12. 12 that'll do it that's with an eighth ounce weight too and a seven foot rod if i had a quarter ounce and a seven six forget about it i'd be halfway i'd probably be towards the other side of this place in fact tomorrow i think we're gonna do a catch and cook oh, yeah? got a biggin biggin all right y'all we are back at the house wrapping up an awesome first impressions i gotta tell you i'm so happy to have this new 2021 zillion in the lineup what is it, the svtw i can barely even understand what all this gibberish is i'm used to the shimano like xg hg all these different things and now i gotta learn a whole, whole another manufacturer's lingo so please forgive me on that but i hope i catered to the masses with this video i really wanted to not only showcase the highlights and features of this for your more i would say more advanced anglers looking at picking up a truly high quality high end top tier reel right and then also balancing that in with the folks and, and many of our regular viewers and subscribers who might be newer to the sport and just want to know how to set up a bait caster whenever they're buying something new for themselves in their lineup so hopefully we accomplished that goal we got to see some real first world use and the thing that i'm most excited about and you guys probably will be too and we didn't get to showcase too much during this video which is exciting for a lot of the content coming up be sure to subscribe if you're not already is the clicking drag system with this reel now is it a gimmick because there's a lot of marketing fluff out these days. I want to tell you that Daiwa makes a fantastic reel. Shimano makes a fantastic reel. Why do I keep bringing those two names up? Because those are the two, well, now, huh, for basically Shimano, that we fish with. And so, with that being said, is that a gimmick or is it actually something that's going to get utilized on a day-to-day -day basis? Now, here's my take. I think there's so many great qualities to this reel, but all these manufacturers are getting better with the components, with the innards. They're getting better with the braking systems. They're getting better with the smoothness, the overall feel in the hand. I mean, all these companies I feel like are doing a fantastic job here in 2021, but something that is truly different and unique, which actually attracted me to buy my first Shimano was the DC braking system. This has got something just as crazy. It has the clicking drag so I want to spend some time on it because I could see how this could actually come in handy you know every once in a while it just happens the drag loosens up on your reel or you go to set the hook and your drag is not tight you know how it goes and so with this system in place you'll actually hear that drag clicking a little bit and know you need to crank it now generally speaking when I notice my drag is loose I'm pretty quick to figure that out I like I set the hook and it slips or I am bringing in that fish and I'm not going anywhere with it and I know to tighten that drag. But just this extra audible click is just a little bit of reassurance where it's like, okay, 
you know that you have a fish pulling that drag you can hear the clicking and maybe that extra second or two faster that you react to tightening up your drag helps you catch and land that fish so where i really want y'all's take and where i think it might be on the partial gimmicky side right marketing fluff just something different to stand out is the fact that your drag is not slipping on bait casters all the time. You're not throwing a spinning reel, for instance, usually with lighter line, lighter hooks, and you want to utilize that drag and that tension to your advantage because you know that they could just snap you off. You're using heavy gear on the bait casters most frequently. This is 15 pound rated fluorocarbon. You got a beefy hook, and you're going to probably have it pretty close to cranked if you're throwing something like a Texas rig like we did today. So you're not really going to hear it very often. So I just wanted to throw that out there because if you buy this reel knowing it's got the clicking drag, you're probably not going to hear it very often. Maybe you die it back and you loosen that drag a little bit if you're throwing some treble hook baits some moving baits things of that nature but a lot of times I imagine you'll have it pretty cranked up now it is a 100 spool size reel if you're well I think it's actually considered a 1000 but I think it's comparable to like a Shimano 100 which I'm gonna continue to reference since that's what I know so it's not the largest spool all in all the first impressions have been I think the thing is amazing if you're contemplating spending a lot of money and going out of your way to buy this new Daiwa Zillion for 2021 I would say you don't have to think twice if it's within your budget if you want to pick this reel up you're not gonna be disappointed go ahead and grab this thing and I look forward to showcasing it even further and doing a full review on it very shortly so be sure to check back as we try and break our new PB on this bad boy right here and with that being said said we have wrapped up today's video if you want to pick up any of the gear it's going to be linked in the description and we'll catch y'all on the next one see ya